my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be breaking down Max Allegri's Juventus side. Of course, he does play in a variety of back three formations. Sometimes going with a 3-1-4-2 formation or potentially sometimes going with a back five formation with a 5-3-2. Of course, I'll be showing you ways that you can replicate and recreate both sets of tactics in this video. If you can, please hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new, and let's hop on straight into the video. So for the formation going forward, I've gone with a 3-1-4-2 formation. So it's one goalkeeper, three center backs, one DM, two central midfielders, two wider midfielders, and then of course, two strikers. Now with the tactical vision under Max Allegri, they are very defensively astute and sound, and they look to try and, you know, break up and stifle anything that the opposition try and throw at them on the offensive side of things, of course. So for the tactical vision, I've gone with Gagan pressing. They are very structurally sound, yes, but they do look to try and implement a bit of a, a low block to mid-block press, where they aggressively look to try and press the midfield of the opposition once they get over the halfway line. So for the defensive style, when they turn the ball over, I've gone with pressing after possession loss. You want them to try and be very counterintuitive when they do lose the ball to try and win the ball back and then quickly transition into the attack. Of course, you will notice that with this side, they're quite happy for the opposition to try and have the ball. Yes. But again, they'll make it very uncomfortable for them nonetheless. So with your possession stats, there won't be, you know, 50 plus percentage in the, the possession. But again, like I say, defensively astute, compact at the back, and that's more or less what you're going for. So with the team width, it's set to 30, and the team depth, it's set to 40. Making sure it's a bit of a, a mid to, to low block approach. Uh, making sure that your defenders aren't really getting too high up the field. And they, in turn, can't actually be exposed with a through ball or a quick counter attack from the opposition. On the offensive side of things, the builder player is set to fast build up. You are looking to try and quickly transition into the attack when you do turn that ball over. So it doesn't matter where you are in the field, you will have your runners busting a gut to get forward, to try and beat the off or the opposition's defensive line and get them behind them more times than not. For the chance creation, I have gone with direct passing. The offensive players, like your two strikers, as well as your wider players, they'll make those runs in behind the opposition's backline, looking to try and get the best of them more times than not. As you can see here for the width, it is set to 70. This does open up a bit more space between the lines for your attackers as well as your midfielders to try and work into. And then as for players in the box, I've set it to around five. This more or less means that you'll have at least your two attackers in the box as well as a third potential player. More times than not, it will be Adrian Rabio making that advanced run into the attacking third. As for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to fall. So starting off with the instructions at the back, we've got the likes of Shezny. He is set to come for crosses and having a balanced approach for his saving outside of the box. It goes without saying, you are playing a mid to low block at times. You don't need him being adventurous and getting outside of his his zone or his area and trying to make those saves or reclaim the ball. You just need your defenders to do their job, have the recovery pace, and I think all will be fine. But in terms of the saving um, on crosses, he is very good at doing so, very good at claiming that aerial ball when it is whipped into the box from a corner or a free kick um, or just a regular cross. He is very decent at claiming that ball and alleviating the stress and the pressure on the back line. Now, speaking of your back line, we've got the likes of Bremer and Gatti. Um, so in order to try and keep a, a very compact um, and, and know-how structure, especially in your back line, I've gone with conservative interceptions for both Bremer and Gatti. Um, I think it just helps them not be too adventurous or too aggressive with trying to win the ball back. Even when it's set to normal at times, they do tend to, you know, try and gamble every now and then. With this, you want them to be able to track back, make sure that they're closing down the gaps, making sure that they're not giving the opposition much. And in turn, they will more times not try and win that ball back. Whereas the likes of Danilo, because your other two are going to be conservative and structurally sound, on the offensive side of things, you want your captain, Danilo, overlapping and helping the likes of Kostic in those wider areas. So that's why I've gone with him to overlap. Now, moving on into the midfield, starting off with our DM, Locatelli. He's here to cut pass games and stay back while attacking offering a nice shield and a layer of protection for your backline. And you will note that with the midfield, they are probably going to all be set to aggressive interceptions, making it very hard for the opposition to try and play through the lines and in the central areas of the pitch. But because your defenders are set to conservative, your, def your, your defensive midfield, as well as your two central midfields, they'll do a lot of the hard, heavy hissing in that central area, trying to win the ball back very aggressively, which is why the interceptions are set to aggressive as you can see here for the positioning freedom it is set to deep line playmaker you want your dm to be able to collect the ball off of the goalkeeper or the back line progress it forward hit those um runners in transition try and get the ball into them as fast as possible the defensive positioning is set to cover the center now you'll see with all the central midfields as well in order to try and stifle the opposition's builder play 
more particularly in the midfield areas. You want them to all cover the center, be very central, very centrally focused, breaking up anything that is in that central area. Moving on to the likes of Rabio and Moretti, similar roles, but slightly different. So bear with me with this. The likes of Rabio, he'll be a bit more of the box to box player, but also breaking into the box. Like I said earlier, with the players in the box being set to five, it's more or less going to be your attacking players, so your Chiesa and Vlahovic or whoever you have in your front line. And then occasionally it will be the likes of Rabio breaking in, trying to tire in those good headers whipped in from crosses, of course. Um, and you want him attacking those potential cutback opportunities as well. Interceptions is set to normal, so because he does a bit more of the attacking outlets, you won't have him being set to aggressive, whereas the likes of Locatelli and Moretti, they'll be a bit more of the engaging, aggressive types on the defensive side of things. The defensive position, though, is still set to cover the center, as well as the positioning freedom is set to stick to position. As you can see, a the likes of Moretti, Still set to a box-to-box -box player, yes, but he won't always break into the box. He'll stay on the edge of the area looking to, to rotate or try and facilitate for any of the other attacking players making those deeper runs into the final third. Aggressive interceptions, just like with Locatelli, are set to be on trying to stifle the opposition's ball to play in those central areas. Of course, the likes of Rago will look to also do the same, but not as aggressive as what Locatelli and Moretti will do. That's why I've set um, more or less Rabio to normal, because I think... On the defensive side of things, he doesn't offer as much as what the other two do. Um, in terms of the defensive positioning, it is still set to cover the center as well as stick to position. Very structurally sound in that midfield department. Moving out to our right and left midfielders, both of them have the same set of instructions. So we'll start with Weyer. He's set to come back on defense, stay wide, and of course having a balanced support for his support runs. Um, I think because obviously you have a very compact system, you don't really have natural wing backs, you do need your wider midfielders to track back, pick up those runners in those wider areas, which is why I've gone with them to come back on defense, as well as staying wide is essential, providing a lot of the width in this team, allowing the, the space to be opened up in those wider areas, opening up internally, opening up space in those central areas for either your attackers or potentially your midfield to try and work with. And then for the support runs, you can obviously have them making those lung busting runs in behind and they will naturally look to do that more times than not but again you also want them to potentially add another body into the midfield when required or potentially having that target man approach the ability to hold up the ball and link up more effectively with other players in and around them aggressive interceptions are set to be on for both of them looking to press in those wide areas as well and then for the support on crosses sometimes making those runs into the box other times looking to stay on the edge of the area trying to facilitate or have those crosses fired in from them or potentially those cutback opportunities. As you can see, for the likes of Kostic, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Moving on into our front line now, of course, we've got the likes of Chiesa and Vlahovic. So for Chiesa, he's set to having a support run set to balance. You want him to be able to drift into those wider channels and more specifically, the left-hand channel chasing down those, those balls that are fired in behind. Um, and again, he can still take up a bit more of a central area, linking up a bit more with Vlahovic in certain moments. But his most important trait is the ability to get in behind, using his pace and his know-how to try and beat the opposition's backline. Normal interceptions, though, are set to be on for him, as well as having a basic defensive support. Not always looking to drop deep, but sometimes can do so, as well as having the ability to hang up the field a bit more and be a bit more of the outlet ball going forward. And finally, moving on to Vlahovic, he's set to having a balance with just like the likes of Chiesa running those wider channels when required, chasing down those walls. He's a very strong, powerful runner as well. Um, surprisingly quick, surprisingly quick, I will say that. Um, his most important trait, though, is the ability for him to be a target man. Of course, with the direct passing, he will naturally look to make those runs in behind. But again, you also want to have him have the ball knocked into him, hold off the opposition's defenders, link up more effectively with the likes of Chiesa, Rabio, uh, Moretti, and even sometimes your wing backs when required. Aggressive inceptions for him though are set beyond looking to try and chase down and close down specific passing angles and lanes from the opposition. And then finally, the defensive support is set to stay forward, consistently looking to be the outlet ball in this Juventus side. So now moving on to the 5-3-2 formation, they do use this when they are up against a better attacking side. Maybe your Inter Milan, maybe your AC Milan, maybe even the likes of Napoli, they will use this formation to try and stifle and just add extra layers of protection in front of that back line as well as the goal. So for the formation going forward, I've gone with a 5-3-2 holding. There's no real changes I've made to the formation. So it's one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two wing backs, one DM, two central midfielders, and then of course two strikers. Now the only real changes made to the tactics is of course it's still set to Gagan pressing and it's still set to pressing off the last possession. But the real change comes on the defensive side of things. The team width is set to a bit more of a narrow approach, set to 15, as well as the depth is set to a low block 
at 25. Now moving on to the instructions, the likes of Chesney, he's still got the same set of instructions as well as these three guys right here. I haven't set Gutty as well as Bremer to their uh, conservative approach because you want them to be a bit more aggressive with it. So all three center backs are set to their base set of instructions. So normal inception, stay back while attacking, and then of course stick to position. Now the, the first major change is obviously we've dropped your wing backs slightly deeper to actually be wing backs this time. So they will look to join the attack and provide a lot of the width, but they'll do it at a much deeper starting rate. So they will be more or less intact on the defensive side of things when going forward, as well as going backwards looking to try and defend those wider regions. So both of them are set to join the attack as well as overlap and then stick to position as well. As you can see for the likes of Weyer, you could probably swap out Weyer for the likes of... Um, Descaglio, I think that's how you pronounce his name, I'm not sure, but a bit more of a defensively sound um, player. So, as you can see, a full way, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Moving on into our midfield now, the likes of Locatelli has got the same set of instructions just like before. There's no real changes to the DM position. You still want him to be able to get on the ball, intercept certain passing angles and lanes, cut out the, the opposition's ball to play, but you want him to be able to get on the ball as the deep line playmaker and spray that ball forward. He is more essential in this formation, you could say, in this set of tactics than before. And then as for the likes of Rabio, there are a few changes. He won't be getting forward as much. He'll look to stay back, be a bit more intact with the, the tactics and the formation, making sure it's structurally sound in those central areas. But for the support on crosses, it is somewhat allowed for him to be able to break into the box when required if you do have the ball and you are looking to progress it forward. Aggressive inceptions though, this time, are set to be on. You want him to be able to be very imposing on the opposition's offensive ball to play, especially in those central areas. And speaking of which, the defense positioning is still set to cover the center, looking to clog up those passing lanes in that central um, part of the pitch. And then the positioning freedom is still set to stick to position. As you can see, for Moretti, very similar role as well. Although the only difference is he won't be able to get into the box. He'll look to still try and stay on the edge of the area, looking to try and facilitate for the players in and around the attacking third. And then finally, we move on to our two attackers who have the same set of instructions as well. Both Chiesa and Vlahovic will be looking to consistently make those attacking runs in behind, looking to get into that attacking space when the defense is pressing very high up. Of course, when you use this formation, you are looking to invite pressure, which means that the opposition will try and add players to that pressurizing line, the attacking phase, and that does leave them very thin at the back. So you want your two quick players up front making those runs in behind all the time. So we'll start off with Vlahovic, set to having a balance width as well. Getting in behind is essential. Aggressive interceptions, they're looking to try and close down the opposition's back line very, very aggressively. If they can uh, win the ball back, they can transition very effectively and try and attack the goal. And then the defensive positioning is set to stay forward. As you can see for Chiesa, he will slightly have a different role, but the ability to drop when required into the midfield and help out and provide another layer of support and defensive pressure for your team going forward. So yes, people, that is my version of Max Allegri's Juventus side. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, we are on the road to 3,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So please, if you aren't subscribed, hit that big red button. That'd be fan damn -tastic. And don't forget, we have a, a career mode video coming out later on today. It's very entertaining. Don't, believe me, it is. Um, a lot of stress and pressure went into that uh, th th those five games. Anyway, until the next time, people, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out. Awesome.